All right, so the first construction is, uses nothing but the pigeonhole principle. It proceeds by induction, but let's see if we can understand what it means, first of all. So what about the case when t is 3? When t is 3, you just take the odd cycle C5. As we've commented, that has chromatic number 3 and maximum clique size 2. So now we want to produce one of the next size, one of the next chromatic number. So how do we go from 3 to 4? How do we go from 4 to 5? How do we go from 5 to 6, et cetera? So this is a classic construction by induction. If you can do it at one size, then we give a method by which you can do it for the next. So here's the construction. Given a graph that has no triangles and has chromatic number t for some value t unspecified, here's what we do. Suppose the graph that has chromatic number t has m vertices. Label them, doesn't matter how you do it, x1 up to xm. Now we're going to build a big graph. And this graph is going to have no triangles, but chromatic number t plus 1. Here's how you do it. First, just put down a huge independent set. In other words, there are no edges between vertices in this set at all. Call this independent set Y. Here it is. Boom. Huge independent set. Later we will say how big it has to be. But just think of it as huge. You know, your graph is like this, and your independent set is much, much bigger. All right, now here's what you do next. Out of the independent set, pick up a subset of size M, the same size as the little graph that you started with. So I pick up one, pick up two, three, four, five, up to M vertices. Now, I then attach a copy of my graph, G, to that independent set. The first vertex in the subset to the first vertex in the graph, the second one in the set, et cetera. Let's draw that here on the dot cam just to make sure that that idea is clear. So here's my graph, and I'm going to illustrate this as how you go from 3 to 4, but think about this is general. So my construction was I have the graph when t is 3, a c5. I label it 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, what do I do? I pick up a huge independent set. For the moment, I don't even specify the size of this. I just want you to think of it as being very, very large. So this is the independent set y, y1, y2, up to some value, say n, but we later say what n actually has to be. Okay, now, what do we do next? For every five element subset, because m is five, pick up a five element set, say this one, this one, this one, this one, and, and this one. I'm, I'm really being suggestive here. I want you to see that this picture, we're not going to make any attempt to draw this picture. It, it, it would take me hours to draw this picture. Uh, it takes me only seconds to explain it to you. But I don't want to draw it. I want you to understand what this picture actually contains. For every five element subset, you then take a copy of C5. Here it is. And I'm going to attach this copy to that subset in the following way. The first element, this is, I'm going to drop the X's. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in my subset, this is the first element, the second element, the third element, the fourth element, and the fifth element. I'm going to join them with edges like this. One to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, and five to five. So between those five 
vertices in my independent set and the five vertices in the copy, I have five edges and they have no common endpoints. Now, repeat that for every five element subset of Y. If Y has 100 vertices, how big is 100 choose 5? 100 times 99 times 98 times 97 times 96 over 120. That's a big number. And so it's going to take me a long time to draw it. Of course, I'm not going to draw it. I'm just defining it. But I hope the definition of what the, this graph looks like is clear. Okay, now, what's not clear is how big is n. Well, now, we'll, I'll go back to the, the, other, the presentation in just a second. But now I just want you to think with me. What does the pigeonhole principle say? If you have to put a lot of pigeons into very few holes, eventually you put a lot of pigeons in the same hole. That's what the pigeonhole principle says. Now, I'm coloring. Suppose I try to color this new graph, this new graph which is much harder than my original graph because it's got the original graph in spades. It's got bazillions of copies of the original graph inside this new graph. So the coloring problem hasn't gotten any easier. It, it might have gotten harder. But suppose it's the same. Suppose there is a way to color this graph with T colors, where T is the number that I used on the smaller graph. And so you can think concretely, in this case, think about T being 3 and going from 3 to 4. Suppose this new graph can be colored with only three colors. Well, look at the coloring that you would apply just to this independent set here. Now, there are no edges. You can color those vertices any way you like. Anyway, color them all the same, flip coins, alternate one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. When you want to change, so three, two, one, three. You can do anything because it's an independent set. Now, your choices might impact what you do after that. But what does the pigeonhole principle say? if you're putting the pigeons, the elements of that independent set, into holes. And what are the holes? The holes are the colors. One, two, three. So lots of pigeons, very few holes. The pigeonhole principle then says, you will have to put a lot of pigeons into the same hole. And what do I need lots to be? I need lots to be m. In this case, if I'm going from 3 to 4, I need m to be 5. So, question, how big does n have to be when there's only three holes to force five pigeons in the same hole? You tell me, what's the answer? That's pigeon, that's how big does n have to be so that if you put n pigeons into three holes, three holes, that you must put five pigeons into the same hole? Somebody, how did you get 13? A perfect answer. She thought, I'm going to say it a little louder. You said, if I only have four pigeons in each of the holes, that's three times four is 12. And if I have one more pigeon, 13, then some hole has to get five pigeons. Clear? I hope that's absolutely clear. So in the case where I'm trying to go from three to four, that value in is 13. So how many copies of the little red five cycle would I actually have in this picture? Answer, 
13 choose 5. How big is 13 choose 5? Well, we just answered that, right? 13 times 12 times 11. It's a big number. That's a big graph. I can, I can describe it to you easily. I just have. But I don't want to draw it. You don't want to draw it. Nobody wants to draw it. But now let's explain why the chromatic number of this new graph is no longer 3. It's 4. Okay, why is it at most 4? Because I've got tons and tons of copies of this 5 cycle down here. Lots. And I, I, how many? I got 13 choose 5 copies. But there's no edge between them. There's no edge between them. So use colors 1, 2, 3, colors 1, 2, 3, colors 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Can't hurt. And use one new color up here. That's a four coloring. So the chromatic number, if it's gone up at all, has gone up at most of four. Now let's explain why it has gone up to four. It can't still be three. And now we use the pigeonhole principle. If you put those 13 pigeons into five holes, then there is some five element, five pigeons, which go in the same hole. So the, somewhere in my picture, I can say, this got color alpha, this got color alpha, this got color alpha, this got color alpha, and this got color alpha. Five pigeons have to go into the same hole. Now, those five pigeons have their own little copy of the five cycle attached to them. So look at that copy. And what do you know? Color alpha is not used there. Because each one of those is adjacent to a vertex which has been colored alpha. And if you only have three colors and you ruled one of them out, that means you're coloring this with the other two. And you can't do that. And that's completely general. If I'm, go if I'm going from T colors to T plus one, I just need a bigger value of N. I need it enough to guarantee that there are M elements that go in the same color class, M pigeons that go in the same hole, and then I get the own copy of G attached to it. And so the chromatic number has gone up by one. Okay, now let's also think about this last little detail. Each of those five cycles had no triangles. But what about this big graph? It got lots, lots more edges. Can it contain a triangle? No. Because, again, it's pigeonhole. If you have a triangle, where is it? It can't be inside any one of the copies. They don't have triangles. So you've got to use at least one vertex from Y. But you can't use more than one, because there are no edges in Y. So you only use one. Where are the other two on the triangle? They're not in the same copy, because you see, you only put an element in Y to one vertex in a copy. So they have to go into different copies, but there are no edges between different copies. So there are no triangles in the bigger graph. The chromatic number has gone up by one, but we didn't introduce any triangles. OK, let's just think about how fast this family is growing. To go from three to four, we started with five vertices. How many vertices does this graph have when we do it the way I just said? It has. 13 choose 5, I mean, I'm sorry, it has 13 vertices in Y. That's not too big. But then it's got 13 choose 5 copies 
of a five cycle. So five times 13, choose five plus 13. That's how many vertices are in this graph. So when I'm going from four to five, M is more than a million. More than a million. So I put this huge subset, and it's got to be big enough so that when I color with four colors, I put more than a million. That means this subset is pretty big. It's like four million. And then how many copies do I put? It's like four million. Choose a million. Check it out. That's a big number. And think about when you're going from 100 to 101. The numbers are astronomical. But they exist. All right, that's proof number one. It uses nothing elementary, just the pigeonhole principle. Uh, this proof was actually published uh, by two people named Kelly. Kelly and Kelly. Uh, a father and, and daughter. Okay. A long time ago, by the way. Oops, I want to go back. Okay, so that's our first argument. And in the, in the bottom paragraph, I actually write down what the pigeonhole result is and uh, the explanation for when, when t is 3, it's 3 times m minus 1, m is 5, throws 3 times 4 plus 1, 13. But it grows much, much faster. 